Hello, everybody. My name is Carol Marks, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. This podcast is a member of Give Me Liberty Media. Now, let's get right to it. This intro is way too long. Hello, good morning, and we really do need to get right to it. I'm running a little late this morning. Uh, Not too terribly, but it's okay. I don't know how time slipped away for me, but it did. All right, my first podcast topic is, uh, oh gosh, uh, let's see, what do I want to start with first? Um, I had four of them, I don't know if we can get to them all, we'll see, all right, let's start, let's, st- okay, sorry, I should have been prepared, oh my gosh, this is going to be a day, I can tell, all right, let's start with this one, go over it real quickly, Small Indiana city pleads for help from feds after up to 2,000 migrants move in, overwhelming hospital and schools. Here is another instance where migrants are being dropped off, shipped in, flown in, whatever you want to bust in to small neighborhoods. I told you this was going to happen. It's maybe not happening like I thought it was, but it's still happening no longer in the big cities now they are branching out to the suburbs here we go an indiana community is pleading for help from the federal government after up to 2,000 migrants from at least 28 countries flocked to the city of 18,000 people overwhelming the local health system and making the roads dangerous many migrants have arrived in logansport as unaccompanied minors what Many migrants have arrived in Logansport as unaccompanied minors, putting a strain on the schools and increasing the population. Haitian migrant students to nearly 15-fold in just three years. Okay, I'm not going to go any further than that. You know what is happening. I don't know how we can stop it. (laughs) I just, I don't know. Uh, I have I have nothing to say. I don't know what to do. All I, I don't know what to say anymore. I oh, just, gosh. All right, let's go on to this next story. Montana fa- father camping near Big Sky found dead in tent after vicious attack. And it's not by a bear either, they are saying. He was all alone. This This is the reason. Remember a long time ago, I wanted to, like, get an RV sell the house, live in an RV, just travel the nation. I knew that was not going to happen. Now, I definitely don't want to do that after after all this immigration and all the illegals that are here. And it's not just them. There's uh, the uh, Americans are doing it too. We have lost our ever-loving minds. We have become like the wild, wild west. No, it's worse than that. <laughs> At least the wild, wild west had some some kind of order to it. But these, the bat, man, it's just terrible. A father was discovered hacked to death in his tent Saturday morning after he failed to meet up with a buddy for a weekend of camping. Uh, Dustin Mitchell, somebody, I can't pronounce his last name, 35, suffered multiple chop wounds, including to his skull, on a makeshift campground in a remote area near Big Sky. People have asked me if there's a threat to this community, and the answer is we don't know. We don't have enough information to know at this time. They're saying it's not a bear attack. There's no no, uh, evidence of any kind of animal around. There's no bear. It's not a bear attack. And I guess the way the wounds are uh, were on this guy, it's definitely done by with an instrument. So be careful out there oh is why i don't ever want to go anywhere or do anything because people have lost their ever-loving minds it's chaotic out there all right the next topic i found this interesting i haven't read the whole thing i just re- actually read the the headlines uh women a woman who is 63 years old with alopecia is humiliated after reportedly being asked to leave pub over her face tattoos Shock to my character. Now, she doesn't have tattoos on her face. It's actually on the upper forehead, like where hair would be. I think she got um, like a whole head tattoo. I've seen women with alopecia do this. 
they get tattoos all that cover their whole head but it just comes down barely uh to her forehead um it doesn't look horrible at all she, she does have some neck tattoos uh and she's wearing like a braided wig it looks like i'm not sure if it's a wig or not a 63 year old woman has revealed why she was asked to leave a popular waterside venue saying she felt humiliated by the experience all right let's see i'm sorry i lost my place uh i had to pause it for a second let's go back to the story all right carrie ashby was at the collie hotel in south australia with a friend on sunday when a manager walked up to her and her friend and asked them to leave the staff were looking at us i uh, I am used to people looking at me, and it doesn't bother me, Miss Ashby told the news. But when I asked for the menu, security was standing behind me, and the manager said I was being refused entry because the owners have a policy against facial tattoos. Miss Ashby has a mandala tattoo along her hairline and a sea creature design on her neck something she had gotten on her 60th birthday due to the fact she has alopecia. I've seen women do this. I've seen women tattoo the tops of their heads just slightly down on their the top of their forehead. I've seen this done. She was surprised thinking that she was going to be told the kitchen was closed after seeing no one in the dining room. If it was it was something that confused her as she had been to the venue since the new owners had taken over and had no issue. They have pictures of her on here too, if you would like to go see the picture of her. I was gobsmacked. I wasn't angry. I felt a bit humiliated. It was so unwarranted and unjustified. It's not a reasonable cause. I dress well. I'm not troublesome. I am always respectful and I'm well known in this area. I was just really shocked. She pointed it out. It was also an impossible policy to enforce, asking what about people with tattooed eyebrows, eyeliners, and lip liner, and where where do they draw the line? The pub's website does state that its dress code is clean, tidy, and respectful. So who's going to judge that? Who's going to be the gatekeeper of that? Please note that person with facial tattoos are not permitted to enter the venue. I wonder why... Why did they specifically say facial tattoos? Is it okay to enter if you have a tattoo on your arm? Uh, I mean, maybe they have a gang problem there. I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I don't know why I liken facial tattoos to, to gangs, but I don't know. You can go finish reading that story. She looks like a lovely lady. I don't know why they refused her. I guess because of their policy. Um, all right, we're going to end with a good story. I'm not going to read it all because I'm running late. I know. I know it's not your fault. It's my fault. Forgotten Civil War veteran and will finally get proper tombstone. Thanks to two New York middle school students. See, there are good things that come out of New York. A forgotten Civil War veteran who died without proper burial is finally receiving recognition. Thanks to two eighth grade students in New York. Uh, it goes on to say this, uh, obviously, uh, you can go finish reading that if you'd like. I know, I know. I just feel like I'm just reading straight from the article here. Uh, but there's a lot to it. Uh, they talk about the two girls and this guy named Walter House, who was born in Orleans County, New York in 1823, died at an Orleans County Alms House at around 87 years old. This alms house is where people go that can't afford, uh, I guess, to take, have to be taken care of by a different facility or they don't have family members to help them anymore. Tim Archer, a retired service learning teacher uh, at Albion Middle School, told Fox News Digital that the former Union soldier spent around a decade of his life at the poorhouse. He had been injured during the war and spent time in a Confederate prison camp. Ooh. I didn't know they had prison camps back then. The almshouse was a place where people that didn't have anybody to care for them came. The teacher explained anyone from people with mental, physical disabilities, babies that were unwanted up to the elderly, immigrants that didn't have family in the area, and blind people. The Orleans County Almshouse was in operation from 1830s 
1960, according to Archer. In 1910, Walter House was buried in an unmarked grave in a section of the Poor House Cemetery for people who couldn't afford the headstone. So apparently, this teacher's school uh, got a hold of this. These two girls took on the project to get him a proper burial headstone. I don't know if they moved him or they kept him there. Uh, anyway, they even took the summer to do it. They took their summer vacation to continue on with the project. Good news. All right. I guess I need to find a question of the day. All right. Do you have your heat on yet in your house? Is it cold enough to put your heat on? We, I don't think we've turned ours on just yet. Uh, and it's also the time of the year here in Alabama where I drive to work with in uh, the, with the heat on my feet, but with my windows rolled down. Because <laughs> if I keep the windows up, it gets too hot, but then my feet will get cold. Oh, well, whatever. You, that's too much information. All right, I got to go. Thanks for listening. I promise I'll do better next time. I'll get up earlier next tomorrow and do a better job. Thanks. Bye. What's that? What's that? We're not a democracy!